Welcome to PDMA Corporation, home of the MC Emax. I'd like to thank you for joining us as we continue along in our presentation series. Once again, we have Noah Bethel, the Vice President of Product Development. Hello from sunny Tampa, Florida. And I am Todd Gunderson, the Vice President of Sales and Marketing. And Noah, this is a second part of a three-part series where we're kind of honing in on the three keys to a successful motor maintenance program. Yes, and all three are so critical, and we want to give each one the proper focus. Right, and as we mentioned earlier, we've, we've got a lot of time on the pond, or so to speak, as far as programs that we've seen around the globe, really. It's not just domestically, it's, it's everywhere around the world. And we've seen what constitutes a good program, and these are the keys that we think uh, really help to make that. So you came up with this, the trifecta, and we've explained this quite thoroughly in part one. Yeah, the analogy is if you pick the top three horses, you win big. You use the top three you know, uh, processes for maintenance, and you win big in maintenance as well. So now we're going to focus on part two, which is trending. Now this is, uh, we see this in everyday life, don't we? Absolutely. And you know, you hear us say, trend is your friend. You know, and it is. It's something that, you know, so often when we see data sent to PDMA for, you know, to look at a motor or generator, uh, we get one test. Why? Because once the motor starts acting up, they take a test. Well, it's just like you say every day, you could compare it to health. You know, you can't wait until things go bad to start looking. You want to get that trend so you can look ahead and try to make good decisions. You know, this is why your wife is constantly or your husband is telling you, you need to see the doctor on an annual basis. Well, why is that? Well, you need to start developing trends, right? So you can see something prior to it becoming catastrophic. And that's what we mean here. We just want to see data so that it doesn't happen, what, on a Saturday night? Right, something always fails? a Saturday night, you know, maybe or, a Friday. Well, it could be a Friday. Certainly an evening. Never weekend. happens Monday when you first get to the job. Never. <laughs> it's, it's usually on the weekend. So we're going to really focus on trending here in this, uh, and we have a case study for trending. So let's get into this. This is another big motor motor, uh, Noah. Yeah, 4,000 volt. We got a 2,500 horse and uh, the infamous two pole, 3580 RPM. That always makes it a little more difficult to troubleshoot in that it's so close to, you know, synchronous, you know, line frequency. And we love the fact that we have the nameplate is included with slots and bars, and that helps us with other por portions of the data analysis when Absolutely. you know that. Uh, but here it is. This is four years of good trended data. Wow. It's so nice to have that. The spectrum plot, you know, focusing on uh, mostly on rotor health, but some other, uh, you know, other issues. Uh, thumbs up. Yep. So we would say we've got four years where we know there was no issue in 8, 9, 10, or 11. Now we can also look at another screen, which is our demodulation, where we strip out that 50 or 60 hertz signal, and we're left with some mechanical as well as pole pass and, and uh, mechanical uh, speed. Yeah, we can't overlook the machine train, things along the axis or the you know the the rotor and the shaft that can cause trouble all the way from the load. It's it's a big deal, and we really like this test. So we have four years of clean data here. Now we come into 20, 2012, mm. and we see some big uglies creeping up into our caution. Absolutely. Area. Previous spectrums had no peaks anywhere near that, and now all of a sudden this January test has uh, right at the caution level. So we, we would call this a pole pass sideband, and these are generated due to high resistance connections in the rotor, most likely from cracks or breaks in the rotor. Right, absolutely. And so we're, uh, we're going towards the yellow, which would be a cautionary signal. So we see that we have some potential issues here. We look at DMOD and we change dramatically. Wow, it, it says there are 25 times. That's a huge jump in the pole pass frequency, which again is, is directly pointing to the possibility of a rotor anomaly. Right, so we've we looked at, so this is an action list that, we come up, that we've come up with over time. We wanna know what the speed is, why? Right, you know, when we got this problem, we're saying, what do we do with this problem? Just like you said, and the number one issue there is speed. And this is a two-pole motor, as I mentioned earlier, high centrifugal force. Uh, the rotors are, are really being slung around. If they're, if, and, and again, that's just a big deal. The higher speed, the more likely catastrophic failure can occur. Right, so you want to be precise uh, in rotor design. Makes a big difference too, doesn't it? It does, and whether it's open bar or closed bar design, if the if the slot if there's a slot open over each rotor bar so that the rotor bar is exposed to the outer surface of the of the rotor, then in the event of a crack or a break, that rotor bar can and tends to slip out of the slot and it flies right into what's next, the stator, mm -hmm. and the then it doubles right the, the cost of the repair. 
So we have some guidelines that we tell you. Why are these guidelines important? Right. So the most stressful time in a motor operation is during the startup, for across the line primarily. Uh, drives limit that a little bit, but that startup current and torque on the rotor is extreme. So if you can not you know, get the motor up and running and leave it running, then that's a big deal, right? And so try to limit the number of starts and stops. Second there is increasing the testing frequency. Very often people are testing quarterly or semi-annually to collect data, but if you know you've got a pending problem or a potential anomaly, increase the frequency monthly or even more often to try to establish how quickly is this rotor going bad. If that bar is slipping out of a slot, you don't want to wait for three more months to take a test. Right. So if it is becoming more severe, you really want to take aggressive action. But the whole por portion of this is, or the purpose of this, is so that you can plan when it gets repaired, right? You don't have to put a crimp on production. Uh, you don't have to uh, essentially shut down the whole plant. You can kind of maybe baby this motor into a open window of repair. Right, what we like to call a, a scheduled outage, not a uh, right. unscheduled not outage. Not an unscheduled outage. Those are, the unscheduled outages become quite costly. Oh yes. So, good good uh, good trend is also to look at the comparison of a, a maybe a sister motor yeah and often we if we don't have the trend that we really would like to see uh, the next best alternative is to basically look at one that's just like it a similar motor or identical motor that we can compare it to on a same load and say well what is that motor doing so remember the motor in question was at 0.7 this is down below 0 0.1 so wow. probably a 0 0.08 or something of that nature so very little energy at that level and so we pull the motor and this is what we come up with wow what a what a this is a great visual um obviously they're 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 identifying the crack at the in, in ring right there where the rotor meets the in ring and a lot of a lot of damage uh, a lot of a lot of what looks like rubbing damage um you know one thing we notice is that the slots themselves are not necessarily opened up that much this is an open bar design uh, as if you have long-term, you know, broken or cracked bar, you start to burn those slots open, and that's where the fear of that rotor bar coming out of the slot. We don't see that on this motor, but a lot of rubbing damage and a definite crack. Right, and you normally, like you said, when you do have when it when it's been in long-term condition, you'll see tracks of current that run along the top of that or along the uh, the laminations of that rotor because current still is flowing. Current will find a way. It will find a way to flow and that's why you see that burning on the top of the uh, the laminations there. So here we see something physically is causing this damage in here and lo and behold what do we come up with here? Right, this looks like the spider ring that puts the axial torque on the on the laminations, holding them together. And it, I would say this one is either just a little too long, or maybe was uh, cracked and, and slipped up into the into the rotor because it's definitely been made in contact. Well, and if it hits, if you can imagine that hitting a rotor, that's a lot of, of you know horizontal well, remember, stress. Remember, it's three thousand RPM. It is spinning so fast that minute. all that damage probably occurred in a very quick you know moment in time. So we send it to the repair facility to get this looked at and. Unfortunately, they had to do a quick turnaround on this because of the needs of the, the company, and we got this back. So what are we going to tell the customer now? Boy, it doesn't make you very comfortable, does it? It's just not a, not a good feeling to see the same data after it, it, it had you know gone bad. I would say at this point, we have to apply those principles we talked about earlier. You have to continue to test at a high frequency. We're still very concerned about this uh, the, the actual connection at the rotor itself, and it's not going to get any better. And they just did a top brazing of it is what the, the uh, end user described to me when he was talking about it. He knew that this is what, but, but based on the needs of the company and what the, the process that was, uh, the, the uh, production that was required, they had to get this motor back and right. in place and operational. So, Noah, thank you. That brings us uh, to a conclusion of part two of our three-part series where we really focused on trending and why that's so important. The next, uh, uh, the next volume that we'll be going into or the next uh, module that we'll be talking about is diagnostic. And yeah, that'll be part three of three. The troubleshooting effort. So that'll bring a conclusion to all of these topics that we've been talking about. But as always, as always we thank you for your time. And we hope you listen and tune in to part three of our three parts here.